our intention, blessing and honor. we shall be praying for all your personal intentions. The church celebrates today the solemnity of the apostles, saints Peter and Paul. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us first acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. together. God, who on the solemnity of the apostles Peter and Paul 
give us the noble and holy joy of this day. Grant, we pray, that your church may in all things follow the teaching of those through whom she received the beginnings of right religion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Herod the king laid violent hands on some who belonged to the church. He killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And when he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the days of unleavened bread. And when he had seized him, he put him in prison, delivering him over to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending after the Passover to bring him out to the people. So Peter was kept in prison, but earnest prayer for him was made to God by the church. Now when Herod was about to bring him out, on that very night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and sentries before the door were guarding the prison. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood next to him, and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him, saying, Get up quickly. And the chains fell off his hands. And the angels said to him, Dress yourself and put on your sandals. And he did so. And he said to him, Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. And he went out and followed him. He did not know that what was being done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. When they had passed the first and the second guard, they came to the iron gate leading into the city. It opened for them of its own accord, and they went out and went along one street, and immediately the angel left him. When Peter came to himself, he said, Now I am sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to God's word is, From all my terrors He set me free. I will bless the Lord at all times. Praise of Him is always in my mouth. In the Lord my soul shall make its boast. The humble shall hear and be glad. Response From all my tears, He sets me free. Glorify the Lord with me. Together let us praise His name. I sought the Lord and He answered me. From all my terrors, he set me free. Response From all my terrors, he set me free. Look toward him and be radiant. Let your faces not be abashed. 
This lowly one called the Lord heard and rescued him from all his distress. Response From all my terrors he set me free. The angel of the Lord is encamped around those who fear him to rescue them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed the man who seeks refuge in him. Response From all my terrors he set me free. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am already being poured out as a drink offering and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed, and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to matthew glory to you o lord at that time when jesus came into the district of caesarea philippi he asked his disciples who do people say that the son of man is and they said some say john the baptist Others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Two very interesting people whose solemnity we celebrate today. In the case of one, namely Peter, the invitation came from the Lord to follow him. And therefore Peter was very much present when Jesus walked this earth. Paul comes onto the scene much later, much, much after Jesus' resurrection. In Peter we have the initial fervor of being called to follow Jesus. 
than initial enthusiasm of being the disciple of Jesus. Whereas in Paul, we can see how there was one who persecuted the church. In Peter, we have this great man who says, I'm ready to even die for you. And when the time actually comes, he goes on to deny the Lord thrice. In Paul, we have someone who encounters Christ on the way to Damascus, and that becomes his turning point. When from being a persecutor of Christians, he becomes a faithful disciple of the Lord. In Peter, we have the first Pope, someone who was given charge of entry and exit into heaven, almost literally given the keys to the gates. And in Paul, we have a missionary who went on from one place to another, taking the good news of Jesus, becoming a messenger of the Lord, and went on to give us his beautiful letters that he's written to different communities. Two wonderful people, my dear brothers and sisters, literally the pillars of the church, and we have so much to learn from them. Each of them coming with their own share of weaknesses, and so do we. We do have left everything to follow the Lord. We could have made other choices perhaps, or our parents could have made other choices for us at the time of our baptism. But they chose that we become disciples of Jesus. And maybe we have a Peter and Paul in each one of us. Because there are times perhaps when we've not been faithful to our calling. There are times when we too have said, Lord, I'm ready to die for you. But when the moment comes, I backtrack on that promise. Perhaps there are times when I question God, I question the church, I question even the clergy, I question my religion and my faith. And in a way I'm persecuting the church. But yet, each one of us, humble as we are, have a sense of realization where our folly lies. And therefore, each of us, I believe, has this encounter with the risen Christ and that becomes our own turning point in our lives. When once again, we become faithful to our calling and we're ready to follow the Lord no matter where he leads us. I pray that this beautiful feast that we celebrate today of the apostles, Peter and Paul, may be an example for each one of us, that like them, we do come with our share of weaknesses and failings. But every time we encounter Christ, we only become stronger as far as our faith and our discipleship is concerned. We now profess our faith using the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, God substantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, and in accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I offer to him, take and receive.
my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice of yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. May the prayer of the apostles, O Lord, accompany the sacrificial gift as we present to your name for consecration. And may their intercession make us devoted to you in celebration of the sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by your providence, the blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, bring us joy. Peter, foremost in confessing the faith. Paul, its outstanding preacher. Peter, who established the early church from the remnant of Israel. Paul, master and teacher of the Gentiles that you call. And so each in a different way, gather together the one family of Christ. And revered together throughout the world, they share one martyr's crown. And therefore, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, O 
Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saints Peter and Paul, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession, in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Oswald our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you in their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours. Forever and ever. At the Savior's command, then formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom of the power and the glory, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, God you take, take away the sins, sins of the world and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say, say the, the word, word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, 
I beg you to come spiritually into my soul to enrich me with your holy grace and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O divine guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your divine will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Communion him, I call you from your brothers. I call you from your brothers. I stand you in my name. I love you with my spirit's time to burn as one elsewhere. I call you from your sisters. I stand you. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, who have been renewed by this sacrament, so to live in the church, that persevering in the breaking of the bread and in the teaching of the apostles, we may be one heart and one soul made steadfast in your love through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Prayer for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic. We pray that the vaccine be available for all our people, even the poor and those in rural areas. We pray for doctors, nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle, that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you, for he has made you steadfast in St. Peter's saving confession, and through it has set you on the solid rock of the church's faith. 
Amen. Amen. And having instructed you by the tireless preaching of St. Paul, may God teach you constantly by his example to win brothers and sisters for Christ. Amen. Amen. So that by the keys of St. Peter and the words of St. Paul, and by the support of their intercession, God may bring us happily to that homeland that Peter attained on a cross, and Paul by the blade of a sword. Amen. And may the peace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I recession in him good news. Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. A very happy feast of St. Peter and Paul to all of you. Wish you, wish wish you the same, same Father. Father.